So let's start at the beginning. The best place to start always, probably. And what we're looking at here is the Word document of Marriage in a Cold Climate. This is where I first started writing it and setting it out. Now, that's chapter one there, but as I scroll up through the pages, let's go up here, all the way to the top of the jar, there's um, the title. Now, there's obviously no image in this, so I haven't put one in. The next page, copyright and dedication. Now, some of these you can put in your Kindle book and some you don't need to. Dedication's always good. You can have an inside title page if you like. Um, this page I would put at the end of the book and you can leave out the ISBN. That's really probably not necessary with a Kindle book. Dedication in the front matter. And as I said, copyright, dedication. And there we go, author's website. You can leave that out or put that at the back of the book. Now that's a bit of a blurb about the document itself, about the story. Dramatic story that spans two continents, blah, 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 and the blurb. There's the story starting there, chapter one. Now you can see I've got um, paragraph breaks there, and you can put those in or check them when you're in publisher. And so we go on down. Oh, it's scrolled up to the top. Silly thing. There we go. Why is it jumping back to the top? This must be this. I've got a new mouse here and it's behaving very strangely. There we go. Chapter 3. Chapter 2. This start. This book started out as a, a weekly story in a local magazine. That's why it's very short chapters. A thousand words per chapter, I think. However, that's the Word document. Now, what I did with the Word document, just saved it as a, as a docs file, put it down there. Now, this, is, this should be very familiar to you. This is my publisher file, Affinity Publisher. I've loaded it in. There's a master page. Um, let's get the pointer going. Now, there's nothing in the master page. It's simply master A. The spread setup, it's eight and a half by 11 inches. It doesn't really matter for Kindle because Kindle pushes the everything around um, to make it fit the Kindle anyway, which is why formatting is really a waste of time. Now, the first page, I've got the image in there because it uses it. But you may find with Kindle you have to load the image in as a separate thing. If you put it in the file that you upload to KDP, I'm almost certain still it ignores it. It used to, it may still ignore it. There we go. Let me move down. Blank page there for no good reason. That should be at the end of the document and you'll see as I get through to a later version, the dedication you'll see is pushed over to the edge. There we go. Now there's chapter one. You'll notice I've still got paragraph gaps but I've taken out the line indents. No line indents there. However, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, chapter 6, chapter 7, and there's our really bad gaps. I've skipped through and I've thought to myself, oh, that will be good enough, and left them in. Now I'll go right through to the end and somewhere down here, what chapter are we on? Chapter 11, oh, a long way to go yet. Remember when you auto flow text into your document, it, if you do it correctly, and I've got a whole video on auto, auto flowing text. Chapter 14, 15, 16, there's 17. Now you can see I've got those correctly indented. Not tabs, not lines and spaces, but correctly indented. Now I've done that as I mentioned before because I've got no paragraph spacing there because if you push spacing out there you'll have lots of separate little bits of text. 
So I've left those there so that your eye doesn't just see a big splodge of words on the page. Your eye can see each idea as it presents itself. So really, the bottom line there is take your time with formatting. Because what you do then is export that to the PDF document. Now, I won't show you about exporting because you probably should already know that by now. Let's just hide that. And the document you end up with is a PDF document. Now, you'll notice that apart from that, they are still there, but there's no fancy indenting. This is almost a plain vanilla text file, except for those little bits of things. The newer version of Kindle will actually try and link those. So if you've got an early Kindle, you may be out of luck, but the later one does it. Now you can see there, Natalie, there's a little space there, so I've left a space. There's another one there, and another one there. Let's see if we can get right through to chapter 17 and see what happened to those spaces. 14, 15. Sorry about the vertigo that you're suffering from me flicking through the pages. Now, that one is slightly out of line with that one because the italics there line up, but the text above it doesn't. So whether I leave them in or take them out, Mm, it really is a decision, but so far it seems to be accepting them okay. Now you can see there, there's a gap between that line and the next paragraph, and that's indented. So it tends to look a little um, awkward, I think, but it's not as bad as that one. So one has to be careful about that sort of thing. Now that's the PDF file, and it eventually gets loaded, let me hide that, into Kindle Create. Now this is a program that you download from Kindle, perhaps it's on the App Store, I don't know, but certainly from Kindle. Kindle Create, and you load your PDF file into that document, and this is what we've ended up with. and so on down the page. Chapter 1. Now this little tag there, you can see I've edited that. I've done something to it. So it knows it and remembers it. And there we go. That's loaded into Kindle Create. Now what that does is also, because you don't need a table of contents in your original document, because you can include it. If you look on the right hand side here, you can include in table of contents, let me go down to chapter 7 for example, include in table, you're on that page, include in table of contents, table of contents entry, and you type in chapter 7, and it will jump to that, in most versions of Kindle now. Now that's all there is to Kindle Create. When you're finished with Kindle Create, and you save it, it will automatically ask if you want to check it in Kindle Previewer version 3. And this is what it looks like in Kindle Preview. Because the next stage from this, if you are happy with the document, is to upload it to KDP. And if you've got everything right, ta-da, they'll pass it and you'll be published. Now you can see I've got Table of Contents and I did Chapter 1 and you'd be able to see them all in there. And there it goes to chapter 1, you see. So it does work. It's a good preview. There's our document there. You may remember if you've read Kindle books that you don't go through it bit by bit. See, there's the, there's the indents on chapter 17. You go through by percentage, not by pages, because it... It doesn't actually know about pages. And that's your document in Kindle Preview. All done nicely in, in um, 
Affinity Publisher where you can keep it um, in your file of books and novels that you're writing. And that's all there is to it. Okay. I hope that's nice and clear for you. Um, of course, I'm always ready to field questions, and it's not the only way of doing it. I know there are people out there saying, oh, you should use this and you should use that. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and that's Word through to Kindle Previewer, in my opinion, for what it's worth. <laughs> okay, thank you.